What's going on guys? This is Jake from Fish Tech and today we are going to be diving into how to customize your MacBook or Mac computer menu bar. There's definitely a few different things that you can do to make it your own and kind of personalize it. And we're going to go over a couple programs that uh, that are going to help you do this. So the first category of programs that we're going to talk about is based on hiding some of your menu bar items. So right now, what I have installed is a program called Dozer. And this is personally my favorite program to get this uh, get this done. And I'll show you exactly you know what it does. So I have it set up to a hotkey. So if I hit Command M anywhere you know i could be doing anything it will unhide all these stuff here in the menu bar so i just think that's very nice and the other programs do this too the other programs are called vanilla and bartender bartender is probably the most advanced program out of all three of these but it does cost 15 dollars. so not everybody wants to pay 15 dollars just to hide their menu bar items and fortunately there are two free options. Vanilla is a good option. That's what I used to use actually, and you can see how it's working right here. The reason I was looking for a different alternative to vanilla was it was getting a little glitchy at times. It would sometimes affect this menu bars up here, um, and you know you don't really want that happening. So I recently found Dozer, which is an open source free program that will hide your menu bar items. And it's really nice. I like it a lot because it offers you to use that hotkey functionality. So you can um, hide and show whenever you want. And it does show, does have a lot of options. You can launch that login, check for updates, whatever. Hide the status bar icons after 10 seconds. So if I don't move my mouse over above and interact with the the um, status bar icons, it will actually go away on its own and go back to its hidden state after 10 seconds, which is really nice. Hide both dozer icons when the status bar icons are hidden, just gives it a lot cleaner look. When you originally set this up, you can see that this dot right here, so the way that it works is you put these dots next to each other, everything you wanna hide, you put to the left of them, and then you click the dot in order to hide and show. Well, if you have the hotkey set up, you don't necessarily need that. Um, so you can just hit Command M to show and hide. And now the dot is gone and it just looks a lot better on your menu bar. And you can set up the hotkey doing that right here. So that's enough of uh, how to hide the menu bar icons. Very nice feature, very handy. And we're actually gonna talk about the next program and it is called BitBar. And basically what BitBar does is you can output any script you want in the menu bar. And I think this is super cool. It's a lot of fun to play around with and just kind of see what you can do. You can see on the left side, there are a ton of different categories that you can do. There are so many contributors. This is totally free and all of the all of these um, scripts are free. They're just contributed by different people. There are mostly uh, Python scripts. There are Bash scripts, and there are uh, you know a couple of Ruby, and I believe there are also uh, some Node.js scripts. So you definitely take a look through all of these options. Not all of them work, and most of them don't work off the bat. So there is going to be a little bit of tweaking that you have to do sometimes depending on which one you're looking for. But I'm going to go over some of my favorites and uh, and I'll show you how to get them running. I did want to just touch on a lot of the system script. You know, if you didn't want to pay for the iStats by Django, which lets you basically put the all this information up here. You get your, your memory and your SSD storage and your CPU load and all this fancy information. There are lots of options in the system area that will let you get a lot of that information. Like you got the battery health, you got the CPU load right here the temperature usage kill process there's just a you know disk read and write there are a lot of options so that you can put this information granted it's not going to look as nice but if you just want that information there it will get the job done and you don't have to pay money for the program um, like iStats. 
So when you first open BitBar, there's going to be a little pop-up and that pop-up is going to ask you to set your BitBar plugins directory. So this could literally be anywhere. I just chose to create it in my documents and, uh, and I just named it BitBar plugins. If you ever need to change your BitBar plugins, just go up to any of the scripts that are being run right now. And then you can go to preferences and you can go to change plugin folder and that's going to pull up this same menu and you can choose whichever you know whichever new folder you want or whatever so it's actually super easy to add these to BitBar. So let's say you find something that you are interested in, like this add note version 1.0. All we're gonna do is we're going to click add to BitBar, open BitBar, install it. So you can see that basically what this is gonna do is you can click here and you're gonna click add note. And it does look like this is going to work right out the box for us, which is great. So we're just going to type in uh, what new note do we have? I need to get a new water bottle because mine sucks. <laughs> and we're going to click OK. And let's see if that worked. Open up notes. Uh get a new water bottle because mine sucks. So that's pretty awesome. A lot of the times you're going to download this and it's probably not gonna work out of the box. Hey, we got a new subscriber. Shout out to that homie that subscribed. If you wanna join my touch bar or my menu bar now as well, then please do because you're awesome. <laughs> out of these apps that I have, so I have I'm just gonna run through them right now. We got the menu bar subscriber count. We have a product hunt daily upvoted most product in tech. Uh, we got this add the new note. We got caffeinate, which makes your computer stay awake if you need to go away from it and you don't want it to fall asleep. Very handy. We have the active GPU. I just thought that that was interesting. Right now we're on the integrated graphics. Uh, and if we switched over to the powerhouse Vega 20 that I have in here, which is so cool, <laughs> then it would show the dedicated graphics. Card. This is something to show you how many, how much batteries are left in your AirPods. So I'll show you real quick. I'll connect my AirPods. What sucks about this one is you do have to hit refresh and then it will show you, oh, we got fully charged AirPods. Awesome. But because of that, I'm probably just going to get rid of this one because it's kind of annoying. I'll see if I can figure something out for my touch bar. And then, you know, after you put them away, you have to hit refresh all again. And then it, it's still, oh, ah! So yeah, it's just not really worth it, in my opinion. I'll skip over this calendar for a second. We have this one today was actually a video, so it doesn't work. This is the NASA picture of the day. When you click here, it'll just show you the NASA picture of the day, which is really cool and it's fun. Uh, if it's video, it doesn't show up. So that kind of is unfortunate, but that's okay. Lastly, we have the calendar, which is probably my favorite one out of all of these. Basically, well, the reason I like it so much is because this stupid clock, when you click it, all it says is Tuesday, June 16th. There are so many times when I want to look at the rest of the calendar. Why hasn't Apple just put a stupid little drop down calendar right here? You can go into the open date and time preferences. It doesn't, there's nothing that you can do. You can display the seconds, whatever. You use a 24 hour clock so that you can show the day and the date, but it doesn't give you the, it, you know, what's the point of that? Not much. So yeah, there's just no way to show it. This script puts the date there and then you get the previous month, you get the next month, and most importantly, you get the current month. There's little brackets around the current day. I love it. <laughs> and if that is, if there's only one script that I will keep from this BitBar app, it is going to be this one because I actually care about it. So the only adjustments that we need to do to our computers, depending on what programs you have, we are going to need to download Python to get pretty much all of these working. The bash scripts, you do not need anything else because those all work natively. And I recommend, I have Python 3.7, so, and that's where I 
install all of my downloaded modules to. So if you want to follow along exactly as I do, I would recommend going and downloading some version of Python 3.7. So if you want the NASA picture of the day, um, this is really the only one that you're going to have to make any adjustments to considering Python, but definitely you're going to need Python in order to run most of these. So once you get Python 3.7, you're going to want to, you're just going to open up the uh, APOD 1H blah, blah, blah with the text edit. And what you're going to want to do is originally it's going to say, Python 3, you're just going to want to add 0.7 to it. So now it's calling the path to the Python 3.7 launcher. So Bitbar knows, okay, we're using Python 3.7. Then you're going to come down to the dependencies and you're going to want to add that 0.7 again right here. It's just going to say Python 3 originally and then you want to add 0.7. And you'll see that another dependency is Pillow. So we are actually going to have to open up the terminal and we are going to want to type Python 3.7 base dash M space pip install pillow. So we're just determining which Python we want to install this to and the pip install pillow will go and install this framework. So I already have it installed. So it's just gonna come up and say, hey, you already have this installed. And the pillow is going to allow this program to run. And that is all that you have to do. Just make those changes and we're gonna pip install pillow and then you can hit command S to save it. And then you are all good to go. The, there was a video today, so it doesn't actually show up, uh, but whenever there's a picture, it will show up. And the other script that we are going to want to do some editing to is the calendar light. So basically when you originally download this, there are some tweaks that we have to make. So when you originally download the calendar light, it's going to look like this. It'll have the time and you can click on it and it'll bring you the, um, the little calendar. Well, we don't really want that because we have the time already using the, the Apple clock and that's fine. So I like to use them both together. So what you can do is you can just change what is being shown. So you can see right here, it says if using alongside Apple's default clock, one can uncomment the following. And so what you're going to want to do is just erase that little hashtag there and erase that hashtag there and you'll see that it changes to the date but there is one thing that we do have to change so um, as you can see it is now alternating between showing the clock and the date and it's kind of annoying so we are going to want to add a little hashtag right next to that date command save it and then we're going to just refresh all and now this will permanently be set on the clock and you can press command and uh, drag it over here now it's looking great wonderful <laughs> so you can close out of that after you make sure to save it and that's basically all that i got i hope this made sense to you guys if it didn't please leave some questions in the comments and i will do my very best to help anybody that has questions i hope you guys enjoyed this and you are out there customizing your own touch bars. Uh, this actually works very similar to this other program, Uber6, that I have running on my desktop. Um, and it's just fun, it's cool, lets you customize your Mac and do the stuff that you wanna do with it. So that's my goal, no limitations. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like. And if you really liked it, feel free to join my menu bar and touch bar squad. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Peace.